What's up guys, my name is Mike, and I'm the Weird Pigeon of Weird Pigeon Productions. And do you like drama? It's okay. I like a little bit of drama, I like a little bit of tea. No judgment here, because today, we're gonna be talking about the time that George Lucas himself sued the original creator of the Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet, along with some other props and costumes and helmets and things like that. And to those of you who are subscribed to this channel, no, I am not dead, clearly. <laughs> Um, I just have been really busy and haven't had a chance to post lately, but uh, I'm here, so let's get right into it. Okay, so to really explain this story, what I'm gonna need to do is go back all the way to before Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, the original Star Wars came out in 1977, and talk about a little bit of its production. George Lucas approached a gentleman named Nick Pemberton to construct some props and costumes for Star Wars A New Hope. Among these costumes was the designs for a Imperial Stormtrooper. George Lucas didn't exactly have a design in mind for what he was wanting the Stormtroopers to look like, especially the helmets, so he gave Nick some of Ralph McQuarrie's original drawings of Stormtroopers, and he just told him to create something based off of those designs. After some time, Nick made a red clay model, and it's very key that it's a red clay model, I'll get into that later on, but he made a red clay model of the Imperial Stormtrooper helmet and presented it to George Lucas at a studio, along with a lot of other uh, Stormtrooper clay helmets that had been designed by other people who were affiliated with Lucasfilm. So, in January of 1976, while Nick was on tour of the studio, George Lucas chose his red clay Stormtrooper helmet model as the design for the Stormtrooper helmets and quickly asked his costume department to create helmets based off of this design. But they couldn't figure out how to do it. And you see, that's when Nick, an outsider to Lucasfilm, had an idea. He had a shop and studio in a place called Tickenham, England. And just down the street from Nick was a gentleman named Andrew Amesworth who also had a shop, who was a good friend of his. Now, Andrew Amesworth was working and experimenting with a new type of way to form and mold and create plastic. And this process was called vacuum forming. It had been around for a little while, but it was still a pretty experimental uh, new age way of molding plastic. Nick had an idea that this would be the perfect way to create the Stormtrooper helmets. So Nick approached Andrew about creating these helmets based off of his clay helmet design. And Andrew immediately went to creating a mold and vacuum forming a prototype helmet to be uh, seen and hopefully approved by Lucasfilm. After the prototype helmet was finished, Nick took Andrew to Elstree Studios, where they showed this prototype to Lucasfilm, and Lucasfilm loved it. And with a handshake and no contract or, or invoice later, uh, Andrew now had a order placed by Lucasfilm for 50 Stormtrooper helmets and 40 Rebel helmets. And now Andrew is gonna be working directly with Lucasfilm and all Nick asked in return was for just a few drinks at their local bar. Andrew then presented the finished helmets to Lucasfilm, they loved it, and then with the success of A New Hope, Andrew Amesworth was hired again and again to recreate more Stormtrooper helmets and armor and other props and costumes for Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Fast forward about 20 years to 2004, Andrew Amesworth decides, you know what, why don't I just start producing replica props? Because at this point, it's kind of become a, a, a thing where fans want their hands on these pop cultural icons. And that's exactly what he did. And he sold about 19 of these helmet replicas in the US. And apparently he made pretty good money doing this. As most people probably know, there's no amount of money that a Star Wars nerd will not pay for something really cool from the Star Wars movies. And I'm, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> now, somehow, George Lucas must have caught wind of Andrew Amesworth's little operation there in 2004, because sometime around 2006 or 2007, he sued Andrew Amesworth in a California court and won. And he won about $20 million in damages, and Andrew Amesworth would never be able to sell his prop replicas in the United States ever again. But, and there's a big but to that, George Lucas could not get the $20 million that he was awarded because all of Andrew Amesworth's shops and assets and his entire production was in London still at his studio in Tickenham. So George Lucas would have to go after him again in, in England in order to get what he felt like he was owed. And in a way, I can, I can see where both sides are kind of coming from. On one hand, George Lucas is like, well, this is my intellectual property. These are my designs, my props. This is my movie. Um, you don't own any of it. So why are you trying to sell this and make a whole lot of money off of it? 
But on the other hand, contract law works different, and copyright law, I should say, works different in the UK. And in Amesworth's mind, these are his intellectual property. He made these props for Lucas, but they're his. It's his right to sell them. So I just mentioned before that copyright law worked a little different in the UK. And basically, if these helmets and props were not considered works of art, but rather considered industrial props for a film, then they are not under copyright law in the UK. Meaning George Lucas really doesn't have anything to stand on and Andrew Amesworth can continue producing these props and costumes as he sees fit. But on top of this, Andrew Amesworth would have to prove that these designs were his own and not the designs of Lucasfilm and the art department there at the studio. And this right here is where things start to get really, really interesting. Because what I'm about to tell you will call into question the entire narrative so far. Because so far in the narrative, the thing has been that Nick, using his red clay, uh, made the model for the Stormtrooper helmet that was approved by Lucas and then used by Andrew Amesworth to then create all these Stormtrooper helmets. However, that may not actually be the case. George Lucas claimed that his art department created that Stormtrooper helmet clay model that I showed you earlier. And the claim was that Liz Moore, who created the sculpt for C-3PO and created the costume for C-3PO, was the one who created that sculpt instead of Nick. This is further backed up by Brian Muir, I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, who was the sculptor for the Darth Vader helmet. Uh, he also says that Liz Moore is the one responsible and not Nick. However, a lot of this comes down to the color of the clay. Like I said, Nick used red, whereas everybody in the art department over there at Lucasfilm used a gray clay, which is a higher quality. And in a photo presented uh, during the session, Andrew Amesworth claims that it is pretty clear that the color of the Stormtrooper clay model was red. Unfortunately, we would never get to hear uh, Liz Moore's side of the story because she unfortunately passed away in a really tragic car accident just before New Hope uh, released in 1977. However, her boyfriend did testify uh, in court stating that he only ever saw her use gray clay um, when working on A New Hope. He doesn't remember her using red clay. And based off of his testimony, the court then basically said that, yeah, this has to be Nick's design, therefore Andrew Amesworth is off the hook and he can continue to produce his Stormtrooper prop replicas. However, <laughs> outside of court, there's been more evidence brought up that, again, Liz Moore could have very well been the one to create the original Stormtrooper helmet and not Nick. Brian Muir has stated Liz Moore, working on previous projects like 2001 A Space Odyssey for Stanley Kubrick, used a lot of red clay. And Brian Muir even said that he remembers her using red clay in the pre-production of A New Hope. Meaning that Liz Moore was accustomed to using red clay and could have used it um, on the pre-production for A New Hope. On top of this, Brian Muir also stated that the photo that um, Andrew Amesworth presented uh, showing the red clay model versus the gray clay model could have actually been tampered with. He states that in other variants of that photo, the coloring is very different, showing that these two models were actually made in gray clay and not red clay. But all this aside, Andrew Amesworth is now able to produce his costume and prop replicas from what he claims are the original molds that he used back in 1976 to produce the helmets and armor. And you can find his products on his website to this day. Although you can't purchase them and have them shipped to you in the US, if you're anywhere outside the US, these are available to you. But even this isn't where the drama and all the craziness ends. Andrew Amesworth claims that these are original uh, replicas from the original molds might not be true either. According to a lot of fans, there's a lot of inconsistencies in his armor and what you see used on screen. Now, as far as I can tell, his helmets look pretty much spot on, but I do know for a fact that during Return of the Jedi, um, the original mold actually collapsed. So maybe these inconsistencies are because of fixes to the molds over time, or if you really wanna look at it through the eyes of a skeptic, maybe he never had these molds to begin with and Lucasfilm made them, and they kept them after A New Hope was finished, and lost them like they did so many other props and molds of the years. And you can see on YouTube, Andrew Amesworth recreating molds of the original Stormtrooper helmet from scratch, which further shows that possibly these aren't the original, but really who's to say? And if you wanna do your own research on that, there's plenty of forums through the 501st and other organizations that have tons of information on it 
who have made their own you know, costumes that are screen accurate and know way more about this than I do. So what do you guys think? Should Andrew Amesworth have been allowed to make and sell his replicas? And were Andrew and Nick even the original creators of the helmet, or was it the folks over at Lucasfilm? And on top of all of this, are the props and replicas that Andrew is making today screen accurate, or are they just recreations that he made himself? As always, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This video required a ton, a ton of research. It was crazy. The more I dug into this, the more I kind of had to talk about. Um, I even had to go back and reshoot some of this as I uncovered more and more information. Uh, it's a big rabbit hole that you can go down if you'd like to. I'll post all the links down below. And this is the third episode in a series about the Stormtrooper helmet that I have done. The first one was on the original history. Um, the second one was on what Disney has done. And now I've got this third one uh, about some of the legal stuff that's gone on with it and whether or not Andrew Amesworth actually designed and, and made this stuff. So if you want to check out those other videos, you can check out the link below or up here on the screen. And if you're into filmmaking and photography and how those things intertwine with Star Wars and some of the behind the scenes stuff, um, please be sure to subscribe. I've got plenty of videos talking about costumes and cinematic techniques used in Star Wars and how you can use those things uh, yourself to uh, better create art and enjoy this art form of photography and filmmaking. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.